Hi, I'm George, and this picture has nothing to do with our discussion today. I just came across this and thought it was the cutest thing I'd ever seen. There you go, a little baby kitten on top of her mom. Okay, so bypass that. Here we go. We'll be talking about how to use the Photoshop Elements Liquify Filter. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to click on share and subscribe as well. And to really learn how to use Photoshop Elements, Take a look at my complete training course. There's a link for that right down there in the description. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, one more chance to see that picture. I just think it's so great. Okay, let's get rid of that one. We'll be using this and using this just as a way to talk about the liquify filter. Now before we do anything else, let's just make a copy of this background layer here. So right click on background, choose duplicate layer, and choose OK. If you want to use the same photo, there's a link for this on my website. The link for that, of course, is in the description. Now I want to be able to adjust the dog image without really distorting the background. So I'll need to remove the dog from the background. And that's pretty easy to do. I'll just grab the standard lasso tool over here, which is right there. I have my feather set at one pixel, which is fine. And let's just come in and do a little quick right around here. Don't worry about those whiskers. Around the outside, up this side, and then back around over here. This step really isn't necessary, but it just makes it look a little bit better on the background. Okay, there we go. Grab the refine edge. And I normally have mine set right here on overlay. Usually pink, but when it's against that green, it kind of comes out looking orange. And it set this at smart radius. I'll leave everything else alone. And then let's just paint right along that edge and let Photoshop Elements give us a nice clean edge on that. Okay, just working our way around. There we go. And come clear down around the bottom down here. Get this out of the way. Same thing on this side. Normally when I'm doing this, I will come out here at the outside edge of that selection and then come in. It's kind of worked my way in. It seems to give a better edge that way. Okay, it's almost finished here. Along the back side. There we go. And we'll finish that off right there. Let's take this out to a new layer with layer mask. Choose OK. There's a new layer with a layer mask. Now if I hide the background, you can see there's the dog with just that part of that image. If I show the background again, I want to show you one thing about this. We're going up here to the filter menu. Come down to Distort right here, and then down to Liquify. Brings up our Liquify right there. And notice in here that even though I have the layer mask on, I'm still seeing that background. If I cancel this and I hide that background here, we're not seeing anything in here. Let's go ahead and do that again. So Filter, Distort, Liquify. And again, notice I'm seeing that background. So even though we're hiding it with the layer mask, you're going to be seeing it here inside of the Liquify Photo. That's just the way this thing works. Okay, some basics now. We're seeing this full size that's filling our screen up there. If I go over here to the Zoom tool, you can zoom in and out with the Zoom tool. Or you can, at the bottom down here, you can use these buttons right there, kind of zoom in and out, or even choose from specific settings in here. There's Fill, View, there's a Fit on Screen right there. I'll just back out just a touch. Okay, that's our Zoom tool. If you're zoomed in, just go ahead and I'll just zoom in this way. You can use the hand tool here to move your image around. This is useful if you want to get in and do some detail work. Normally though, that's not really needed that much for this particular tool. We have a bunch of different tools up here. The top one is the warp tool. I'll just choose that one. And you can kind of see the size of the brush right there is pretty big. You can adjust your brush size over here under brush tool options, but you can also use the bracket keys, the square bracket. So here's the left bracket and it makes the brush size smaller. Here's the right bracket makes the brush size bigger. So that's the best way to do this. Now what this first tool does is just kind of pushes things around. You see it right there? Just pushes things around. You can go up and down, whatever you want, and just do some really strange stuff. But that's what that tool does, kind of a push tool. Now right here, very useful one to know about, this is the reconstruct tool. Grab that. This also has a size for your brush. You can adjust this size as well. Simply paint over your image and it backs it up back to the original. Notice it doesn't just snap right to the original, it actually backs it up several steps. So you can kind of go forward and then go back a little bit if you want to using that reconstruct tool. 
Okay, our next one's here. This is a twirl clockwise. So I'll just do it right here. Pretty easy to see. If you go kind of move it around, it goes faster like that. You can also use revert up here to go right back to the beginning. There it is, it'll revert button. Otherwise, the same thing, just the opposite direction, and then revert as well. And then down here, we have the pucker and the blow tools. This squeezes things in. If I go here to the eye, I'm just make my brush larger here. Again, that's the right bracket. This will squeeze things in like that, and let's revert. And then down here, brings things out like that. Okay, and back to revert again. So those are the basic tools. And we'll use those to do just a little bit of fun stuff here on this dog. Now, last little bit, we'll be using these pucker and blow tools, mostly the blow tool first, and then a bit of shoving around here with the warp tool. With this, notice how much the image is bloating as I'm using this with that large size brush. It goes way out towards that edge. Let's go ahead and revert that. If I bring the brush size down, that's the left side square bracket. It's a smaller area. So you can control how much of that is bloated or puckered by using the size of your brush. Okay, let's now talk about making this thing into more of a caricature. And the way you do that, this applies for human faces as well. You want to take aspects of whatever the face is and then exaggerate those aspects or push them in a certain direction. Now for this, I want to make the eyes bigger just because I want to have larger dog eyes on this one. So we'll be using a bloat tool on that. The ears are pretty big. I can make the ears larger. He's kind of droopy down here on the mouth. I can make that more droopy. We can maybe push the nose in just a little bit. It's kind of a short nose, not a real long nose. I can push the nose in a little bit. It's kind of wide across here. We can make this a bit wider. So you just exaggerate the different aspects of what it is that you're working with. Let's just take this bloat tool. I'll make this larger, again, using the right size square bracket. And just a couple of taps like that. Do the same thing on this side. Come right in the middle of the eye and try to make them so they match. That looks pretty good. About the right size. Now this right side seems a little bit lower than the left side. So I'll grab the warp tool right here, a little larger brush again, and I can then just pull that up a little bit. So you can reposition things. This tool works best if you don't go very far with it. Just little moves and it really works out well. If I want to make the ear bigger, I can take this and actually just kind of pull the right side of the ear out and do it in just little little moves like that and just slowly stretch it out and make it a larger ear. Just working your way around. Let's work on the inside now. Just kind of make it a much larger ear this way. So again, just take your time with these tools and you'll get the best, most natural looking results. Let's do a little bit over here at this ear as well. I'm going to push the nose up just a touch. Now the nose is kind of turned a little bit here. So I'd like to have it an angle more like that and not an angle like this. I want to turn the nose clockwise. Let's grab our clockwise rotation up here. And it's going to spin just a little bit like that. And that helps to realign that nose for us. And this we can just kind of bring that up a bit. There we go. Not too much. Just up a little bit. I'll now bring my brush size down. Again, this is the left side bracket. Just a bit more. And I'll kind of pull the edges down here of the mouth just a bit more make a bit more droopy to the same thing out here again it's going in little steps and this will make it work out better if you go too far or too fast it begins to look kind of funny but it's a little bit and you can make this a bit more controlled maybe a little bit more right in there as well looking pretty good I think the left eye is a little bit small at this point let's grab our bloat tool again and just come up just a little bit one click right there and one little tap right there. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's go back up here. Now I mentioned that we can make the head a bit wider. So I'll go for a larger brush. And let's just push the outsides out a little bit here. And work around. And bringing out the outside again. Again, just little moves. Kind of working this as if it's a piece of clay. And stretching it out. To look pretty good and that's not too bad maybe bring it down a bit here in the middle just working around now notice how up here 
I'm also kind of distorting the background, gets these weird kind of stretchy things in the background. That's why I wanted to separate the dog out from the background. See right there, there's kind of poking up there, the background kind of pokes, you can see it right there. And that's looking pretty good. I think we were doing an okay job on this, just a little bit of an adjustment. When you're happy with your look, just click on okay. This will then bring that dog in. Notice how we have kept it inside of the layer mask, but the layer mask no longer fits. But this gives us a basic idea, and I think we're okay on that. So I'm going to get rid of this layer mask, right click, and let's disable, actually just delete that one. There we go. And we'll do that layer mask again. Same thing. I'm still on my lasso tool, and let's just go right around the edge of the dog. Don't go in too tight, just kind of out like this. There we go, and around the bottom and right side, and then back in again over here. The reason I'm doing this is that I want to be showing the original background in behind this. That has a nice clean edge to it. And then click on the refine edge. There we are. Let's choose smart radius again. I'll be outputting this thing to a new layer with layer mask. That's fine. And there's our tool. Now I brought the size up here to 45, make it just a little bit easier in here. And same thing, start out a little wide and then come in a little bit and that should give you a nice clean edge. There we go, just work your way around. And once that's done, we'll output this and then we can see the original green grass background. And that should give us a nice clean looking background with our caricature style dog in here. We'll then do just a little bit of touch up on the dog. Okay, just about done here. There we go. Looks fine. Choose OK. There's our nice clean edge. Let's now show our background right there. That's the one. So by using this background here, we have a nice clean looking background. No distortion on the background. And this looks like a real nice clean edge in here. So it appears as if this is actually taking a picture of in there. If I had allowed that background to remain, you would have seen the distortions around the background. And that's a dead giveaway that this, of course, has been manipulated. Obviously, so are those eyes, but you, know, you do what you can do. Okay, let's now go ahead and fix this. There's a bit of a red eye in here. It happens on some dogs sometimes. This may have been taken in the spring. I don't know. So let's get rid of that red. Easy way to do that is to go over here, and I'm just going to grab the tool right here, the dodge tool, watch the sponge tool right there. The sponge tool desaturates, and that just removes color. So we can use this just in here and brush over that, and I'll pull the color out, making it basically a black and white image in this area, and that removes that red effect. I'll leave some of the blue in there along that edge. That's very natural looking. I just want to get rid of that red. Do the same thing over here. Just touch, make that kind of a black and white image in there. Okay, now let's lighten this up. Same tool, come down here where it says Dodge Tool, and this is just going to lighten up those midtones. I'll just paint over that. It keeps all of our details, you can see. It just lightens things up, bring back in a bit more of that whiteness. I could change the brush size, but I think this brush size worked out just fine for us. Okay, let's go ahead now and go back to Fit on Screen. And that looks much, much better. If I wanted to, I could put a little highlight in here, maybe right around this side because the sunlight is over here somewhere. Like a little highlight right here and right here, make it look a bit more kind of cartoonish, but I'll leave that one alone. So there we go. That's how you can use that liquify tool. And again, it's pretty easy to use as long as you approach it slowly and don't try to do too much of an adjustment on it. If you go too fast, it comes out looking kind of weird. So just kind of work your way up on it. You can have a lot of fun with that tool. And again, that's up here. That's the filter and down here to distort and then down to liquify. Something else about this tool, you can go back and use it several times on the same layer. Just go back here. We're back on the same layer again. As you can see, I'm going to do one more thing here. This is the push. I'm just going to move this whole eye up just a little bit here. I think it was just a little odd looking right there. I think that's a bit better. Better lineup right here. Choose OK. And there we go. Okay, so that's working with that liquify tool to do a bit of caricature, in this case, on this dog. And if you had fun with this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to click on share and subscribe as well. And take a look right down there in the description for a link to my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. And I'll see you next time.